हेलो एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग टुडे इज नाइनटीन ऑफ जनवरी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एनालिसिस डिस्कशन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल टेक द एंटायर एनालिसिस ऑफ हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर अलोंग विद द करंट अफेयर बेस्ड एमसीक्यू एंड इंपॉर्टेंट मैपिंग लोकेशन दैट आर इन द न्यूज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टेक ओवर व्यू ऑफ एंटायर न्यूज सो दैट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड एट विच आर्टिकल्स आर रेलिवेंट इन द टूडेज न्यूज ऑल्सो यू कैन डाउनलोड एक्सप्लेनर नोट्स ऑफ दिस एंटायर सेशन फ्रॉम अवर टेलीग्राम चैनल लिंक फॉर टेलीग्राम इज गिवन इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स इन यूट्यूब नाउ हेयर वी हैव डेली एडिशन एंड यू कैन सी दैट फर्स्ट आर्टिकल दैट वी हैव इज नाइन किल्ड एज पाकिस्तान लॉन्चेज रिटेलिएटरी एयर स्ट्राइक्स इन ईरान नाउ गाइज इफ यू रिमेंबर येस्टरडे वी हैव कवर्ड दिस एंटायर डेवलपमेंट दैट इज गोइंग ऑन सो वी हैव सीन दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देयर हैव बीन अटैक्स ऑन द ईरान दैट हैज हैपन फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिसेंटली इन करमन सिटी there was attack that happened in iran when there was the memorial event held for the qasim uh, <coughs> sulaimani okay also we have seen this particular also we have seen this particular thing that the iran has provided this particular thing that spy agency of israel that is mossad and there are certain separatist groups in the pakistan also is is kharosan all they are targeting iran okay now what iran has done iran did the counter attacks for example iran carried counter attacks in syria idlib on is khorosan iran also carried counter attacks on iraq because according to iran in iraq israel was uh, operating their intelligence center and then what happened iran also attacked into the baluchistan region of the pakistan now pakistan in return in retaliation has carried attack on iran and saying that this particular strike was on to the terrorist groups that are operating in iranian territory and were working against the pakistan now iran the pakistan says that it was a precise attack but iran said this particular thing that there are the civilians that have died in this now guys if you remember uh, yesterday i discussed this entire issue and entire security issue that is going on in the west asia we have discussed this much elaborately i will advise you that if you have not seen yesterday's newspaper please watch the first article their entire west asia issue we have discussed however if you have seen it then guys no need to track it every day okay however all these things indicates that the security situation in west asia actually it is becoming concerning now moving on further in this particular direction uh, 12 school students teachers killed in gujarat boat size misfortunate event that has happened navy helps drone hit vessel in gulf of aden so guys we see this particular thing that around red sea area also there are the attacks that have been carried by houthi rebel groups okay so here in this capacity there was one ship that was targeted and ins visakhapatnam has helped this particular ship then moving on we have then advertisements in city section we have regional political articles etc that are there um, and then there are these advertisements etc so guys we will be moving on from this particular place okay uh, here there is one particular development that has happened i discussed it with you earlier also now basically what actually happened recently there was one incident that one of a man who was uh, held for molesting another women that particular man was taken to uh, was taken to the police station while they were en route this man jumped out of the police vehicle and got injured then this particular person was taken to hospitals but happened what but what happened hospitals denied admission to this particular person for example here if you see there is an entire timeline that has been given that the person was brought to jpch where he was put on assisted ventilation and then referred to gtp hospital so it was provided that gtp hospital they did not took that person even into the emergency ward then another hospital denied 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 eventually this person died now what this particular thing shows this particular thing shows an example of apathy which happens to be an important dimension in ethics gs paper number 4 what is apathy apathy means a sense of indifference a sense of indifference and apathy is the biggest problem in the humans and rather than the apathy there needs to be empathy and compassion 
Now, many viewpoints will develop that the person which was being taken to the police station was accused of uh, sexually assaulting a woman. But guys, understand this particular thing that when we talk about our country's justice system, we uh, follow the process and in this particular direction of process, justice would have been given. But right now, the type of the type of behavior that has been portrayed while dealing a person that was injured, this is unacceptable in all the capacity. It shows a kind of a structural systemic issue that has been there. That is the issue of medical apathy, medical apathy in a difference. Okay, moving on in this direction. However, no need to go too much in detail in this particular article. Just you need to have these particular dimensions in your mind. Then we have the political articles, etc. here, center attempting to run rival government using governors. Now, this issue is going on from so many months, particularly opposition ruled states. They say that deliberately governors, they try to stall the law there. Governors direct, deliberately, they obstruct the lawmaking process. And through the governor, center tries to rule in the states. Fine. Moving on. After that, guys, here we have one important article. Karnataka to ask center to allow, res allow reservation within SC. So, sub-categorization within scheduled caste will take this particular article. Then, moving on, after that, uh, we will directly reach to editorial page. Till the editorial page, nothing much important has been given here. Now, coming to editorial page, Belgrade Indian Media will take this particular article for examination. Motivated litigation. Now, this article is talking about that how the litigations are being filed against a lot of mosques that they were the converted places of worships. Earlier, there was a temple or such kind of a things are coming. Okay. Then, moving on, after that, below we have this article, Crafting a New Phase in India-UK Defense Ties. We'll take this particular article. Smaller Citizens, this article talks about the recently released annual status of education report. We'll take this particular article also. Then, guys, moving on to the next page, should AI model be allowed to use copyrighted material for training? Now, we will discuss this particular article also for the examination, find the relevant substance. Then, text and context, how satellites track the weather. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that what this entire article is talking about. So, recently what has happened, there were certain images that were released by the IMD showing, uh, the, showing that how much fog will be there, showing that how much snow will be there, etc. Now, what has done in this entire article? In this entire article, they have shown that what is shown by the different, different kind of colors. For example, what blue color denotes, what orange color denotes, what green color denotes. Okay, fine. So, basically, point is that, guys, too much technical aspects of these color coding has been explained. Okay, so, uh, and in fact, basically what they use in title, how satellites track the weather, but rather than this, color coding, etc. has actually been explained in these pictures that are released. Okay, I have read this entire article, guys, but I did not found much of a substance in this particular article. Then further moving on, uh, we have this article from Drive Away Dolls to Vidutalai Part 2, films to watch out for 2024. So, movie suggestions are there. Then, Moving in this direction, after that, uh, Supreme Court to hear plea by Bilkis Bano case. So, recently we have seen that 11 convicts in the Bilkis Bano case. So, Bilkis Bano was a woman who was raped in Gujarat during the 2022 riots and her family was killed, one infant child was killed. Okay. So, in that capacity, 11 people were given the life imprisonment, but they are released recently. Supreme Court had said that no, they cannot be released. They have to come back. Now, these people have said that we need more time to surrender. That entire issue is there. For examination, no need to go too much in detail. Then after that, uh, we have the regional issues here. Now, here we have an article, sub-categorization of scheduled caste. We'll take this particular article. Coaching centers cannot enroll students below 16 years of age. So, this is actually much needed. That, according to me, was the need of an hour. So, it has been provided that the coaching institutions, they have to ensure that mental health of the student is good. Co coaching institutions, Fine. They need to give updated information with respect to the courses, curriculum and actually one very important thing is there that the tutors need to have at least graduate degree when they are giving the coachings because when we have seen this thing often we find that the people okay uh, often this particular thing is has been seen that often the people not having the graduate degrees are giving the coaching. So this ruling has come by the government. Okay, then moving in this particular capacity, India says it hopes to resolve issue of troops in Maldives. So, 
in past few months we have seen this thing that mr muizu who has become president in maldives since then india maldives relation have declined because he is more pro china and he has asked india to take back the troops which were present in maldives and were helping maldives to operate dornier aircraft and helicopters that have been given by india now india says that it hopes to resolve the issue of troops of maldives in this particular capacity what has happened ministry of external affairs spokesperson they have said that they are discussing this particular matter at the higher level okay then moving in this direction fine prime minister lee this posted stamps okay gm crops will make edible oil cheaper we'll take this particular article then uh, we have largely here the political articles bangladesh minister will likely be visiting india around february in the february okay however when the visit will happen we'll see what key takeaways will come then moving on in world page us hits yemen after houthis redesignated re as a terrorist group so yesterday we have seen this article that usa has now decided that houthi group which are operating out of yemen and are attacking the ships in the red sea will be designated as the global terrorist organization and their funds etc will be seized so this has happened okay then moving on after that uh, india to log firmer than expected growth in financial year 24 fine time ripe for assembly aircraft line in india it is because that india will see the uh, india's aviation market is growing substantially then uh, we have sports section guys and after the sports section let's see what are what is the article there in the science page today so in science page today we have this article the importance of periodic testing for human papilloma virus okay now <clears throat> so this is guys all about uh, the uh, articles in the today's newspaper now let's discuss all these relevant articles one by one in the detail okay okay now before guys moving on first i would uh, uh, be taking up the mcq questions that we have taken yesterday they are correct answers so yesterday okay so yesterday we took these mcq questions consider the following statement with respect to international court of justice because recently icj was in news south africa filed a case against israel in icj india has not been involved in any icj case it is wrong against india also the cases have been filed in icj particularly by the country such as pakistan so this is wrong icj judges are exclusively elected from g20 countries okay this is also wrong icj judgments are indeed final and technically binding yes their judgments are final and binding but problem is that they don't have any implementing mechanism so often their rulings they don't have much effect on the ground but in 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 theory they are binding okay so which is the correct incorrect option 1 and 2 are the incorrect option so a 1 and 2 only then next question that we took yesterday consider the following statement with respect to the national essential diagnostic list okay so we have discussed this also because now it is being revised india is the first country to create the nedl it is correct the list includes lab tests for both communicable and non communicable diseases yes it is correct icmr is a top body in the country for making this list yes choose the correct option d all of the above okay so after 2018 who recommended that there needs to be the nedl list india framed it in 2019 and became the first country in this particular direction okay then there was one more question this is a pyq question the main advantage of parliamentary form of government is that the executive and legislature work independently not the case because legislature because the executive is the part of the legislature okay uh, it provides continuity of policy and is more efficient see yes you can say that it is efficient but will there be a continuity of policy you cannot say because as the government will change policies might be changed might be amended might be scrapped okay executive remains responsible to the legislature correct the head of the government cannot be changed without the election no head of the government can be changed without the election okay fine without the election if some other a uh, coalition or if some other leader can prove the majority in the house then without the election also the head of the government can be changed okay then moving on guys uh, let's take the mcq questions for today now mcq questions for today guys please ensure that uh, if uh, please ensure that you mark your mcq answers and please leave the 
comment in the comment box okay please do this particular thing every day it will ensure a very good revision consider the following statement with respect to taiwan with respect to taiwan so recently taiwan elections have been held and on that capacity we have seen article also in the yesterday's newspaper so some of the fact with respect to taiwan is there anyhow we will be doing taiwan mapping also today india recognizes taiwan as a sovereign nation taiwan and china are separated by the taiwan strait okay then the next question that we have consider the following statement with respect to manipur tribal issue the metis in manipur holds a substantial population in manipur methi community is currently has scheduled tribe status kuki and zomi tribe in manipur are awaiting st status so choose the correct option and then consider the following statement biodiversity hotspots are located in tropical region it is a pyq question india has four biodiversity hotspots which of the following statement is correct so choose the right answer and leave your answer in the comment box okay now let's start with our today's newspaper analysis every class we start with the gs quotation today we'll take the quotation from mahatma gandhi ji fine gandhi ji says this thing that restoration of free speech free association and free press is almost the whole swaraj okay so swaraj is a self rule and in theory self uh, in uh, sorry in practice in spirit self rule means that one should have the power one should have power to bring the emancipation of oneself and the entire society now when we talk about swaraj how the swaraj will be facilitated it will be facilitated by certain actors and these actors need to be free and in this capacity first of all there needs to be the free speech when one will not be able to speak one's mind freely swaraj cannot be achieved then free association and free press are the institutions that are needed to exercise the swaraj you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 2 governance as well as in essay fine fine and guys also i would like to inform you uh, inform you that we have come out with round up 2024 now what this is this is a dedicated current affairs batch which will focus on upcoming prelims examination 2024 now in this particular batch there will be weekend classes in these particular classes we are going to cover the entire last one year's current affair in theme wise manner so basically live classes will be there and last one year to 15 month coverage will be there in thematic manner for example economy environment ecology social justice polity ir international bodies science and tech art and culture miscellaneous all these particular theme wise coverage of last one year to 15 months we are doing for prelims that is the upcoming prelims examination classes will be live also apart from that there will be a dedicated module on world mapping where important locations that were in the news would be covered that will be available in this module complimentary after that after that we will be having the mcq test fine so strategically placed mcq test will be there so that you can observe that whether you are learning or not and for revision purpose also these mcqs are going to help you then after that there will be the well structured to the point notes that will be provided in the pdf format and that is going to be your one stop solution for upcoming prelims examination then the focus of the classes will be on retention plus revision so not only focus will be on discussing the topics but in class learning retention will be focused now classes would be held there will be initially two classes per week that we will be around saturday and sunday however as we will proceed we might increase the number of classes but initially there will be two classes per week why because you need to have time for your static areas also okay and recordings will also be available recordings will also be available of these live classes which you can see on your portal if you have missed the classes okay now classes will go on till april end now why we are not taking all the classes once and why we are going till april it is because of the fact guys that we want to ensure that you have the latest coverage so till the newspaper that the articles that are coming in march april that we will also be able to cover if we are doing two classes and are taking it till the april end so the most updated coverage will be there now these classes uh, you can see their validity of these particular classes will be one year the classes will go till april recordings will be available and you can see these recordings till one year and this particular batch is going to start from 31st 
of January and right now we are offering it at 2999 inclusive of the taxes. If you wish to enroll, you can visit the website www.sahilseni.net and there you can enroll in this particular course. Also, I have left the enrollment link on Telegram channel yesterday. So, there also you can enroll. Okay, so you can visit and you can enroll in the course. Okay, now moving on guys, first of all, let's take the one mapping location here. So, recently we have seen that there were elections that were held in Taiwan. And because of these elections, what has happened? China, Taiwan relation are now getting impacted. Because guys, when we see that, understand this thing, that a DPP, political party that has won elections in Taiwan, this political party is a pro-independence political party. And this political party says this thing, that Taiwan is an independent sovereign nation. Now, China gets irritated by this statement. Why? Because China says that Taiwan is an integral part of China. China gave one China principle in 1992, which was agreed by the KMT party in Taiwan at that point of a time. Okay. Now, DPP political party which has won, they say that there is, a, we don't follow any one China principle of China. We are not the part of the mainland China. Rather, we are an independent country that is the Taiwan. So, because of that, China-Taiwan relations are not very much good. And what has happened right now after the elections, what has happened? China, what it has done? It has carried the patrols, combat patrols around the Taiwan. So, let's see some important aspects with respect to Taiwan. First of all, guys, when we talk about Taiwan, so here we have Taiwan, here we have Taiwan, and here we have China, here we have China, here we have Taiwan. First of all, when we talk about the China and Taiwan, they are separated by the Taiwan Strait. They are separated by the Taiwan Strait. Now, guys, one very important observation I would like to tell you. See this thing. Taiwan fears that China will invade Taiwan someday. But understand this thing, what is the Taiwan's strategy to deal with the China? Taiwan has invested heavily in their, has invested heavily in their air defense, has invested heavily in their air defense. So that if China is sending some kind of a warrior ship, they can neutralize them in this Taiwan Strait. So that they can neutralize them in this Taiwan Strait. Now, when we talk about Taiwan Strait, this is an important water body that divides the China and Taiwan. Then we see this particular thing that the Tropic of Cancer, it passes through the Taiwan. Tropic of Cancer passes through the Taiwan. Fine, very important aspect. Then guys, we find this particular thing that on the southern side, there is South China Sea and in the extreme south of Taiwan, there is Luzon Strait. Extreme south of Taiwan, there is Luzon Strait. And here we see this thing that there is Chungyang Shamo. Chungyang Shamo, Chungyang Shamo are the highlands of Taiwan. So, Chungyang Shamu Highlands of Taiwan, Luzon Strait in the extreme south, China and Taiwan are divided by the Taiwan Strait, okay, and, toward, uh, 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 and towards the, <coughs> fine, and towards the, we find this particular thing, that here we have the South China Sea. Okay, then further, we have some other important dimensions, guys, also here. So, then, if we see, then let's see a little bit bigger picture of this particular region. So, okay. So here we have China. Here we have Taiwan. In between there was a Taiwan Strait. Now guys, here we have Japan. Here we have Japan. Here we have Japan. Okay. Then guys, here we have the Senkaku Islands. Here we have East China Sea. Here we have Yellow Sea. Here we have Sea of Japan and here we have the Pacific Ocean. Now, often in UPSC, they have asked the questions asking on north to south or south to north arrangement. So, understand this particular thing that first of all, we have Sea of Japan in the north. Then in the south, we have Yellow Sea. In the south, we have Yellow Sea. Then after that, we have East China Sea. Then we have the we have the Taiwan Strait. We have the Taiwan Strait and then further south, if we go, Further south, if we go, we have the South China Sea here. We have the South China Sea here. Okay. So, this is guys all about it. Now, moving on. Moving on guys, when we talk about the Taiwan, some important aspects. So, you, I have already told you that when we talk about the Taiwan and China, their relations are not very much good because China recognizes Taiwan as the part of the China, but Taiwan says that we are an independent country. Now, when we talk about the Taiwan, the capital of Taiwan is Taipei. 
capital of Taiwan is Taipei. And indigenous people, they got settled in Taiwan around 6,000 years back. And what happened in 1960s, Taiwan has seen rapid economic growth, which calls, which is called as the Taiwan miracle. Taiwan miracle. Now, political status of Taiwan is contested. Only few countries recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. And we have seen in the yesterday's article that, that now, okay, okay, now uh, even this is changed, please. Now, only 11 countries recognize Taiwan. 11 countries recognize Taiwan. Nairu has recently said that we don't recognize Taiwan as an independent nation. Okay, now moving on. Karnataka to ask center to, to allow reservation within scheduled caste, within SCs. Subcategorization of SC. Subcategorization of SCs panel to look into even a distribution of benefits. Okay. Now, let's discuss this particular article. So, basically guys, what has happened? Let's discuss first of all background and then we'll go in, these, in this particular article's detail. First, let's discuss the background and then we'll go in the article's detail. So, For a very long period of time, there are the demands that have come within the OBC community, scheduled caste community, that within the, for example, scheduled caste community, there are specific caste which have been little bit dominant one and they have acquired most of the benefits of reservation. For example, when we talk about the scheduled tribe, we, uh, there is a case study of the Meena tribe of Rajasthan. Now, Meena tribe of Rajasthan is, is relatively economically, socially, educationally more advanced than the other tribes. And majority of the benefits within the scheduled tribe, it is provided that have been taken by the MENA tribes of Rajasthan. Same way in the scheduled caste, in the OBC, it is being said that majority of benefits are being taken by the few caste. So, there is the case of subcategorization. There is the case of subcategorization. Now, let's understand this particular subcategorization in little bit more detail. Now, first of all, guys, as we talk about the India, Fine. As per the constitution order of 1950, reservation is given to the scheduled caste. Now, as of the present design, what reservation is being given? So, scheduled caste, they get 15% reservation. Scheduled tribe, they get 7.5% reservation. OBC reservation was not given. Uh, uh, after, uh, not, was not given in 1950s. It was given in 1990 after Mandal Commission gave its recommendation in 1980. So, OBC, they are given 27% reservation. Then what happened? 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act, 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act also introduced reservation for EWS, that is economically weaker section. Economically weaker section are given 10% reservation. Now, understand this particular thing that the total reservation that is being given today, it is 59.5% reservation. Indra Sahani case, Indra Sahani case of 1992 recommended that reservation should not go beyond 50%. And also there is M. R. Balaji case. There is M. R. Balaji case. Fine. M. R. Balaji case of 1963. It also recommended that reservation is an exception. Should not be beyond 50%. But anyhow, today we are giving 59.5% reservation. Now, this particular matter has been upheld by Supreme Court last year when Supreme Court gave the ruling on the EWS reservation. Okay, by the EWS reservation. Fine, this is something that is there. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that there is, for example, there is, for example, let's say 15% reservation that is being given to the SC. Now, point is that, for example, let's say within SC, let's say there are 100 castes within the SC that are included. Now, they provide that every caste should be given some reservation. Internal subclassification needs to be there. For example, for example, let's say there is X caste, Y caste, Z caste within the SC community. So, they say that, for example, if our population is, let's say, 10%, 10%, then certain seats out of the total reservation, out of the total reservation that is here, internally 10% should be reserved for us. Fine. Why says, for example, their population is 5%. So, they say that within this 15% internally, within this 15% internally, fine, 5 percentage point reservation should be for them. So, this is something that is being explored. Now, guys, what has happened? Many states have demanded such kind of a division. For example, Karnataka has now asked the center government that please consider giving the subcategorization within the SC. 
ओके नाउ वट हैज हैपेंड यूनियन गवर्नमेंट यूनियन गवर्नमेंट दे हैव फॉर्म अ फाइव मेंबर कमेटी दे हैव फॉर्म अ फाइव मेंबर कमेटी एंड दिस फाइव मेंबर कमेटी विल इवेल्युएट एंड वर्क आउट अ मेथड एज हाउ द इक्विटेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ बेनिफिट्स एज हाउ इक्विटेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ बेनिफिट्स कैन बी गिवन टू द एस सी एंड फॉर दैट पर्पज हाउ इंटरनल सब डिविजन विद इन द एस सी कैन बी डन हाउ द इंटरनल सब डिविजन विद इन द एस सी कैन बी डन ओके सो वी सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट right now we see this particular thing that there are over 1200 scheduled castes that are there across the country there are 1200 scheduled castes that are there across the country but they have been crowded out means they have these majority of 1200s are not getting any benefit because there are the few relatively dominant ones who have taken most of the benefit most of the benefit also guys understand this particular thing that what has happened in this particular capacity already a seven bench judge a uh, so seven a uh, judge bench has been constituted in supreme court okay so supreme now this particular supreme court bench it is going to hear the question that whether sub categorization among the sc and st is permissible or not whether we can do it as per the constitution or not so supreme court is hearing the case and five member committee has been established by the government of india now understand this particular thing guys that recently prime minister also announced this particular thing in telangana that we are going to do this particular thing and there is madiga community that is often in the news madiga community that is often in the news now madiga community they live in, uh, in the telangana region and they provided this particular thing that we did not got much of the benefit and since 1994 since 1994 they are demanding for the sub categorization of scs okay and what has happened justice p ramchandra raju commission was established in 1996 national commission was established in 2007 and both of them have studied the matter of sub categorization of sc and they have recommended that it is possible it is possible it is possible now in the past many state governments have also done this particular thing for example punjab Bihar, Tamil Nadu, they have tried to become bring the sub categorization within the SC group, but all these particular enactments were challenged into the court, and as of now, they are being held up in the court. Now, Karnataka government, Karnataka government has suggested a way out of this. Karnataka government has suggested a way out of this. What Karnataka government has suggested? Karnataka government has suggested that what we can do within the Article three hundred and forty one. there can be new clause that can be added that is article 341 sub clause 3 and this particular clause can provide that for the welfare of the scheduled caste community if needed internal reservation internal sub classification can be provided so within article 341 new clause that is sub clause 3 can be added okay so article 341 sub clause 1 sub clause 2 what they talk about they talk about the inclusion and exclusion of the caste into the sc okay so article 341 is for scheduled caste article 342 is scheduled tribe so new provision can be added and by that it could be done okay so this is guys all about this particular article fine i hope that you have understood it now moving on in the next article moving on in the next article fine okay belgrade indian media belgrade indian media belgrade indian media now this particular article has been written by mr shashi tharur who is a three time mp fine now in this particular article mr shashi tharur is talking about the role of media in a democracy and how that particular role of media has substantially got declined and diluted into the past few years we also have seen this particular thing that when we talk about media understand this particular thing it is called as the fourth pillar of democracy we have we have okay so first of all we have judiciary legislature executive which are three pillars of which are the three pillars of a state but now there is a fourth pillar of state that is media fourth pillar of the state that is the media media is also called as the fourth estate of the state now what media does what media does media media provides information media provides information and from this particular information empowerment of the people happens on the basis of this particular information citizens can question the working of the legislature we can question the working of the executive and this particular information as it empowers 
it leads to the fulfillment of democracy, deepening of democracy. Why? Because empowerment of citizen is the fundamental premise of the democracy, is the fundamental premise of the democracy. Okay, so we see this particular thing that post-1991 as liberalization has happened, we saw this particular thing that the media telecast, it also got liberalized and many private media houses have opened up. And since that, what has happened, we have seen that there is an explosion in the quantity of media, in the quality of the news that is being circulated. But this quantity does not mean that the quality of media, quality of news has actually got improved. Today we see that there are the 24-7 news channels which are constantly hungry for the TRP. And what these news channels are doing, rather than truly educating the people, rather than truly empowering the people, all the time they are doing scandal mongering, all the time they are are searching that who is the villain of the day so that around that particular person they can run a story and can get more and more TRP, can get more and more TRP. Now understand this particular thing that actually when we talk about the media, the fourth estate, okay, fourth estate, today what has happened, they are acting as the witness, prosecutor, judge and jury. Witness, prosecutor, judge and jury. And you might have seen this particular thing in 2020 after that, that the death of a Bollywood celebrity that what happened media became the judge, the jury, the executioner. Okay, this is something which has happened. Also substandard quality of journalism which is called as yellow journalism. Yellow journalism, it is being promoted by the media. Now, often what happens, charges are reported uncritically. What happens, media will declare any person as guilty and without doing fact checking, without doing the meticulous study, they are passing the judgment. Now, understand this particular thing guys, that when we talk about the media, media's work is to show you news and not views. Media's work is to show you news and not views. Being a citizen, it is your responsibility that once you get the news, you form your own views. But media, what it is doing, it is showing you the views and it is often imposing you certain particular type of dominant ideologies. Also, see this particular thing that sometimes what happens, the damage is done in the base of lurid headlines. They will run a very big headline, okay, but if they find that it was wrong, what they will do? Some small apology or some small rectification they will print in some side of the corner of a newspaper or sometimes in the news media also this is done. Now when we talk about free media it is the lifeblood of a democracy. Now when we talk about media it is media's roles it is media's role to provide information to the people by that by that the citizens can make the choices that who should govern them. The ones who are governing them how they are governing them this is something that is to be done. Now guys there is an example of canary in a cage there is an example of a canary in a cage. So canary is a bird. What used to happen in the old times, <clears throat> now understand this thing, when you have to go in the deep, in a mine, often in mines there are harmful gases such as carbon monoxide, methane that builds up and these harmful gases are very dangerous to humans. So rather than sending the humans, what used to be done, a canary bird in a cage was used to be sent in the mine. And if that canary bird is dead, means that there is poisonous gases. If canary bird is alive, we can see that, okay, poisonous gases are not there. But if it comes up and it is struggling to take the air, means that there is a moderate level of poisonous gases. So canary bird, which has been used to test the poisonous gases in the mining, it is a kind of a reminder that what is the situation in a mine. In the same way, press, media tells us that what is happening in the society. Now understand that the free press, which is getting suffocated, which is getting chalked, it is an example that what is happening in the society. Society is no longer safe today. Society is no longer safe today. Now understand this particular thing that uh, basically a, a democrat, a democrat, a responsible legislature, legislator will never support the idea of stifling, muzzling the free media. Okay, but what is happening today? The news channels are being, being blocked. Journalists are being charged with the UAP Act, which is something which is problematic. Now, what are the way forward? What is the steps that are needed to be taken? What is the steps that are needed to be taken in this particular capacity? Way forward. Number one, we must engender a culture of fact verification and accuracy. 
that the industry currently lacks. So no news, no media should go out without doing the fact checking. So fact checking culture is to be incorporated number one. Number two, we must insist on better journalistic training. Often what is happening guys, you might have seen into on YouTube that there are many self-proclaimed reporters that are there, just they buy a camera and a mic and they are doing the reporting. Often journalistic standards are not there. So journalistic standards, training of the journalist needs to be focused. Okay, accredited media institutions, fine, should emphasize on certain values, values of accuracy, integrity. Then we must welcome different perspectives in our newsroom. Now, what is happening in the name of nation wants to know. One particular type of viewpoint is being discussed and it is being imposed. Diverse viewpoint, people from different backgrounds should be invited and they should be allowed to freely exchange their ideas so that the people can get educated by that. Then after that, journalists must welcome comments and feedback from their viewers and readers. Fine, so that they can know that how they can further reform their content. Okay, after that, fifthly, government must introduce laws and regulations that limit control of multiple news organization by a single business house. So often we find this particular thing that one corporate house, it is running a lot of media channels. So it might look that, okay, there's a diversity of views, but actually they are being operated by one corporate house. Okay. Then finally, a single overseer, a single regulator of the print media, television media is needed, which can issue the regulations, which can ensure that the standard of media, standard of reporting does not decline in the country. So these are all the things that are needed immediately to keep the media free, to keep the media free. Now, understand this particular thing in GS paper number four, there is a topic of the applied ethics and within the topic of applied ethics, Basically, this particular article in media ethics could be used. This particular article that we discussed in the media ethics can be utilized. Okay. Now, moving on in this particular direction. Crafting a new phase in India-UK defense ties. Crafting a new phase in India-UK defense ties. So, basically, guys, what has happened? Recently, we have seen this also that defense minister of India has visited UK. Now, this particular meet or this particular thing has been called as historical. Why? Because approximately after the, after the gap of 22 years, after the gap of 22 years, Defense Minister of India has visited UK. Now, why this meet has happened? It is because of the Chinese threat that is emerging in the Indian Ocean. And in order to tame China, UK needs India, India needs UK. UK needs India, India needs UK. Now, what has happened when we talk about Indian Ocean, it is important sea line of communication and any emergence of China will put a danger to this sea line and therefore China, uh, India and UK are collaborating. Now guys, what has happened during this particular, in this particular scenario, UK can provide many of the advanced technologies to India. Now, in this particular meet, the objective was that UK should uh, the objective was that the UK provide propulsion, electrical propulsion to India, which will power the aircraft carriers. Now, when we talk about the electric propulsion, so we see this particular thing that Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carriers that are operated by UK, they used electrical propulsion technology. They use electrical propulsion technology and the Royal Navy of UK, Royal Navy of UK has mastered the electrical propulsion technology and as India is becoming, trying to become the blue water navy which has presence in the most important water bodies, we need this electric propulsion. So UK can provide it. Now what is the advantage of using electric propulsion? Now understand this thing that ships having electric propulsion, they have low noise signature. They have low noise signature, they have low acoustic signature and because of that they can operate with a stealth. Okay, they can operate with a stealth. Also, by this electric propulsion, what they can do? There can be enhanced electrical power generation on board. And as there will be enhanced power generation on board of an aircraft carrier, they can run many more other sophisticated electrical devices, which can enhance the capabilities of the aircraft carrier. So for the electric propulsion technology, we have, uh, we have been to UK and we are seeking the 
transfer of the electrical propulsion technology. Now, Britishers have agreed to train, equip and help to establish the infrastructure in India to develop the electrical propulsion system. Electrical propulsion system. Okay. So, understand this particular thing guys that though these are the low hanging fruits between India and UK, but at the same time, but at the same time, there are certain legacy issues that are there in between India and UK. This is something that is to be that is to be crossed over. For example, UK cooperates with India and cooperates with Pakistan at the same time. Often it has been seen that the weaponry technologies that UK has provided to Pakistan, they are also providing, sorry, uh, which they have provided to India, they are also providing to Pakistan. So by this particular thing, the ideological differences emerge between India and UK. Okay. Also what has happened? Often we find that many of the Khalistani, many of the Khalistani preachers, they have found the refuge in the country such as UK along with the Canada. So these are certain things which might impact the relation between India and UK. But rather than this, there are some other bigger threat that is emerging that is the China issue. So on the name of, uh, just to tackle the China, it can be expected that both the countries will cooperate and will overpower whatever the differences are there between them. Also, guys, we see this particular thing. Just a minute. Okay. Also, we see that already military exercises are going on between the India and UK. And also, UK has decided that what UK is going to do. UK is going to send their elite forces to in 2024 and 2025, which will train with the India. For example, British has officially declared that littoral response group, which is an elite force of UK, it will carry a specialized amphibious warfare group, uh, will carry exercise with India in 2024 and carrier striker group will come in the Indian Ocean in 2025 and will train with the Indian Navy. Okay, so all these are the emerging cooperation between the India and UK. A very, very important article guys. Please, please do take notes of it. When we talk about international relation between any two country, understand this particular thing. Between the two countries, there are certain irritants and certain convergences. So basically, this is an example of convergence between India and UK. Okay. Smaller citizens. Smaller citizens. Now, what has happened recently? Yesterday, if you remember, we have seen one particular article where Pratham NGO, Pratham NGO has released annual status of education report and the name of this particular report is Asar 2023 beyond basics. Asar 2023 beyond basics. Now when we talk about this annual status of education report, it is a high profile report which gives information about the learning gaps in India. Now first of all, let's see this particular, the finding of this particular report. Now, in this particular report, what has happened? Rural students in the age group of 14 to 18 have been surveyed. 18 to 14 have been surveyed. And it was a big survey in terms of the sample size. It has surveyed around 34,745 students. Now, what are the findings of this particular survey? Number one, number one, 25% of the students in the age group of 14 to 18. 25% of the students in the age group of 14 to 18, they are not able to read a class of text too, which is really concerning, which is really something which is worrying. Okay. So, 25% of the students in 14 to 18 cannot read the text of class 2. And we find this particular thing that boys are relatively better in arithmetic and English than the girls. Okay. Then, when we talk about the enrollment, enrollment has in, in, improved. We find that between the 14 to 18, 86.8% of the students between this age group are enrolled into the educational institution, which is a good thing. But understand that the enrollment numbers are good at the lower level, but they become poor when we reach to the higher ages. For example, when we talk about the 14-year-old, only 3.9% of the 14-year-old are not in the school. Only 3.9% of the 14-year-old are not in the school. But when we talk about the 18-year-old, 32.6% 18-year-old children are not in the school. So as the classes, classes upgrade, children, students, they drop out of the educational institution. They drop out of the educational institution. Also, we find this particular thing that when we talk about the class 11 and higher, majority of the students, large number of the students, they are opting for humanities. They are opting for humanities. And within their 
actually girls are the ones who are opting more for humanities and less for the science, technology, mathematics. So, we find this particular thing that 28.1% of the girls in, in, uh, enrolled for the science stream and 36.3% of the boys enrolled for the science stream. Fine. The next, 90% of the youngsters who are surveyed, they know how to use the smartphone. So, smartphone a lot of people know, but how to read a text of class 2, majority of them, 25% uh, uh, of them don't know. Now, when we talk about uh, the national education policy of 2020, it has specifically taken the target to ensure that foundational literacy and numeracy skills are to be developed into the children. And if you remember yesterday class, I told you also that Nipun Bharat Abhiyan has been launched. So, today's article is also discussing about the Nipun Bharat mission. Nipun Bharat mission. So, Nipun Bharat mission, it specifically is pushing for the foundational and literacy skills. Now, the time has come that we need to scale up the Nipun, Nipun Bharat mission considerably. Then, moving on. Should AI models be allowed to use copyrighted material for training? Should AI models be allowed to use copyrighted material for training? Okay. Now, guys, see this particular thing. That, now see this particular thing, guys. That when we talk about, when we talk about the AI, you see this particular thing. That large language models such as the chat GPT, Google Bard, they have, in, they, uh, they, are, uh, they have emerged. Now, understand this particular thing. Chat GPT, for example. You go to chat GPT, you type a prompt. For example, for example, what is the history of Taj Mahal? What is the history of Taj Mahal? It will give you an answer that this is the history of Taj Mahal. Now understand this particular thing that all these artificial intelligence platforms, they are needed to be trained on a huge of, on a, on a lot of data. On the basis of that particular data, they will get trained and their algorithm will get fine-tuned. Okay. And the more the data they are trained on, more better they will become. Now, what has happened recently, New York Times, New York Times, it has filed a case against Open AI, who are the makers of Chat GPT. They say this particular thing that the Open AI use the Chat GPT to train on the articles that has been written by the New York Times. And for that particular thing, neither the permission of New York Times was taken, nor they were given any compensation, which is an infringement of their copyright. They say that this is the infringement of their copyright. Without permission, without compensation, they have used their particular, uh, their articles and their data. Now, when we talk about guys, this case, this case has been filed in the US. And as per the US law, these are some broad grounds on which the fair usage is seen or not. Now understand this thing, the fair usage is allowed. Now see, so as per the Copyright Act of USA, there is a four-factor test which sees that whether the usage of anyone else's copyright can be allowed or not. Number one, the first test is the purpose and character of the use. Purpose and the character of the use. Sometimes somebody's copyrighted material is being used for the, for the good of the society, then it can be allowed. Second is the nature of the copyrighted work. Is it highly creative or less creative? Third is the amount of the copyright that is being used. Fine, for example, I can take two or three lines from a book, but I cannot, I cannot print the entire book as it is. The fourth is the effect of the use on the market value of the original. Fine, for example, what happens? For example, what happens? Suppose a person wrote a book. Another person made a summary out of those, this book. Now the original book is selling 10,000 copies and the summary is selling 1 lakh copies. Okay, many people who might have bought that original book, now they are buying only the summary. Okay, now, so this is something that has happened. So, understand this particular thing. That also, one of the important issues that is to be seen, that how the content is displayed. One of the right of a copyright holder is control over how their content is displayed. Often what is happening, somebody's else's copyright material is being used, but their permission is not being taken and even their name is not displayed. That this is the intellectual property of this XYZ person. So, these are some of the matters on whose basis the copyright issues are to be discussed. Now, when we talk about guys, India, India does not have elaborate copyright law as there is in the USA. Okay. Now, understand this particular thing that USA gives a lot of scope for using somebody other's copyrighted material, but India does not give that particular scope. So, guys, if in India, some publishing house, some media house, news house files a case against the chat GPT, then to allow them to use the data, a very broad liberal interpretation has to be taken by the court. Now, the article says this particular thing, guys, that 
it has been provided that only for the research purpose, if we can prove in the code that the AI using the content for research purpose, only then it can withstand. Now, article is suggesting this particular thing that what we need to do, it is also a perfect time that has come that we need to revise, we need to enhance the scope of our copyright law in India. Okay, in the copyright law in India. Okay, now, further moving in this particular capacity, in letter and spirit, Copyright Act of 1957 in India, there is no way for non-human that can be granted any copyright protection. Any copyright protection. Only human materials can be given the copyright protection in India. Okay. Now, understand this particular thing, guys. The article says that the use of copyrighted material for training purpose and let's say for the training of AI should come into the definition of fair use and they should be allowed to use it because maybe tomorrow, if AI becomes perfect, then we can take much more better advantages of AI. Obviously, guys, there is always this particular view that AI will replace humans. But that cannot be a ground to not to explore the possibilities of AI. Okay. That is about it. And then, guys, moving on. GM crops will make edible oil cheaper government. Okay. Now, understand this particular thing, guys. That what has happened, if you have followed the newspaper regularly, we have seen few months back, there was this issue that DMH-11, uh, mustard, DMH-11, which is a variety of genetically modified mustard, mustard. It was decided that it will be rolled out in India. But what has happened, many of the climate activists say this particular thing, that rolling out of the genetically modified mustard in India might lead to elimination of the many of the native species of mustard that are there in India. And whether it is environmentally safe, whether it is safe for the people to consume the genetically modified mustard right now? Should we do more research onto the gen genetically modified mustard? These matters got developed. And the case that whether India can allow the genetically modified mustard or not, the case has reached to Supreme Court. Now, here what has happened, government has given the viewpoint that allowing GM crops will make edible oil cheaper. Now, we see that we use a lot of edible oil. We use soya bean oil, we use uh, the palm oil, we use mustard oil. It has been said, for example, guys, if you see, if you see here, if you see here, guys, here the data has been given. Total edible oil demand in 2020-21 was 24.6 million ton and 11.1 .1 million ton was available in the country. 13.45 million ton of the total edible oil demand was met through the imports, which was 1,15,000 crore rupees in value. So, it is being said that if India, if we go forward with the GM mustard and if these GM mustard seeds can be produced in India and if the GM mustard can be grown in India, it has the higher yield and a lot of imports that we are doing for edible oil, they can be met from India. So therefore, mustard should be allowed in India. As of now, court is hearing this particular matter, much has not come out of it. So I will not advise you to go too much in detail at the present point. Okay, so that is all guys about it. And with this, we come to an end to the today's newspaper session. Guys, I hope that you have liked the video. If you have do like the video, please do hit the like button. Also, please do subscribe to the channel.